That's with the front identification with the center. Um, then it works to, to Christian and the quarterbacks of, uh, and, and the center where the mic point is, and then depending on the protection scheme, um, you know, and the formation where where the line's sliding to. Um, you know, our backs have a, you know, in our offense, our backs are responsible for protecting also, and it's a, you know, tough responsibility because not, you know, we're, we're locked into one or two guys and they kind of have to read the safety rotations and things like that, have an understanding of where the blitz might be coming from. So um, they have a tough job, but they do, they do a really good job of, of picking things up. Angela, over here. Um, last couple weeks, it seems that Christian has had more room to step up in the pocket, step forward in, in, instead of, uh, you know, left or right. What have you seen up there um, in the last couple weeks? That, uh, that like, has given him, um, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I can tell you this, you know, you, you want your pocket, you know, you want your, your center and your two guards to set the depth of the pocket, and then your tackles to set the, the width, um, and, uh, yeah, from what you told me, we've done a good job of doing that, so, uh, we're going to keep it up. Angela, you've seen a lot of offense um, during your time here at Penn State. I was wondering if you could evaluate the growth from game one of the offense as a whole, um, the different moving parts that seem to kind of fit together a little bit better this last weekend um, from then to now. Yeah, uh, so the growth. Um, I think growth with personnel, um, you know, we're playing a lot of young guys and um, you know, obviously you see the success of Saquon and, and you know, Polk and um, DeAndre, uh, just a couple of young skill wide, uh, skill guys that have uh, matured a lot um, and, and have had growing roles in the offense. Um, so that, that's a, a helped a lot. And then, um, you know, just, uh, you know, you, you communicate with your coaches as players and Coach Franklin always preaches of, what we like to do and um, communicating that back and forth, what we're comfortable with, what we want to try and things like that. And I think that communication has grown and uh, has helped our offense progress. Um, and, you know, I think Coach Donovan's done a great job of, of each game, understanding the defenses that we're playing and um, understanding our personnel and the ways that we can try to attack them and exploit them. Angel, is there an aha moment for you as an older guy where you see these younger guys starting to pick it up more in practice or getting on the same page and able to handle a little bit more? What's your aha moment sound like? My, uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, 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 to a point where these younger guys are starting to put it together, they're on the same page a little bit more, and they're able to handle more and mm -hmm. make you guys more variable as an offense. Yeah, and I think you see um, <laughs> spurts of that during camp, and I think that's part of the development of seeing young guys, and that's part of the evaluation process of, hey, is this guy going to redshirt, or is this guy going to help us? And um, you know, the, the more consistent they can be during camp, you know, it gives you more confidence in a young guy. Um, and, and throughout the season, you know, it's, you see things in practice and now starting to, you know, playing games and it's like, okay, we, we see these, um, you know, we see the evaluation process in practice and you know, is the guy a hard worker, is he doing what he's, is he being coachable and things like that, but now it's like, do we also see it in the game? And, um, you know, when guys do both, you know, it's, it's, um, it helps the team out and, and elevates the play of everyone else uh, around them. And uh, from an older guy, um, you know, seeing younger guys do that, you appreciate it because you know it's a senior season, and you know you count on on those young guys to you know help us um, to get to get wins. Uh, that's it. Hey, uh, kind of related to what Travis just said. Talk like a lot of guys who don't really get game reps got game reps on Sunday. Yeah. Or on Saturday. Talk about how important those game reps are. You know, and, and as uh, as a redshirt freshman, I, I was able to get a lot of game reps. Um, I think offensively, as an offensive line, uh, yeah, I'm stuck in my you know box sometimes. But 
Um, normally, a, a young guy gets his PAT reps his first year and, and gets you know a couple game reps, but you know moving on to that next year when you know each year you get older, you know the more you're expected to perform. Um, you know, getting those game reps early and experiencing the stadium and the crowd and the noise um, and competition from someone else, um, being able to deal with the pressure and anxiety of, of performing in front of everyone, uh, handling that and just, you know, not doing anything uh, outside of your technique in front of mouse, not doing anything that you're not coached to do um, and, and perform is, um, you know, something that it's uh, not as easy as you would think. Um, you, know, you go out there and you want to play well, and uh, you know, a lot of things going on in your head. So, for young guys to get reps like that now, with you know, sometimes the score uh, being skewed um, in our favor, it, it, it's it's huge uh, for them to be able to experience the field. Angelo, when Wendy's at center and you're at guard, how does the communication work? Because earlier in the year, you're at center, I'm sure you're making a lot of line calls. Are you doing as much talking now as you did earlier? Yeah, I, you know, I told Wendy that it's, it's you know, he's, he's got the ball um, and it's his game to call. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I was making, you know, majority of the calls. Now, um, you know, being from a left guard perspective, you know, I don't want to overstep him and, and make calls because I might not be able to see something on the right side of the line. Um, but anything that's coming my way, uh, coming um, in, in, in a way that I can see, um, then I'm going to help him out as much as I can. Um, I think the communication has been, um, you know, pretty good between him and uh, between the uh, the guys up front. Um, and uh, we need to obviously need to continue that. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, gonna help him out as much as I can. And to be honest, he's been around a while, and he doesn't really need much of my help. He's, he's extremely capable. Um, but like anything, you, just, you want over communication is, you know, a good thing. It, it's upfront at least. Hi, Angelo. Um, coach talked before about uh, criticism, and he said. When a coach criticizes a player, it's more about the performance than the person. How would you evaluate the way they critique you and how responsive the players are to that? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I, like, I like our coaches here at Penn State, and I don't think they're critiquing us as people. Um, and when, when you do get corrected on the field, they're not attacking your character at all. Uh, I think they're just trying to, you know, Critique you as a as a player, not as a person, um, in most circumstances. Um, but they want you to get better. Um, you know, Coach Hand. I can speak for him because I, I deal with him on a daily basis. Um, you know, he's an energy guy, intense guy, and uh, you know, he always tells us like, you know, we're his guys, and um, he, he's he's going to do whatever he needs to do to get the the best out of us, and, and you know, make Penn State better. So. Um, you know, if it's correcting your technique and yelling at you about your technique because you repeatedly do it wrong, then if he needs to yell at you, then he needs to, you know, to get across to you, then that's what needs to happen. Um, but at the same time, a lot of times that's not the case. We, we talk and talk things out and, um, you know, perform that way. What are some of the challenges with those mobile quarterbacks? Because you guys have seen quite a few of them this year. Uh, they're, they're a pain. Uh, the way they can just extend plays and it's just, it's just tough to, to really handle a mobile quarterback, but you know, I'm pretty sure we got this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James said that he was going to be introducing, or I guess throwing in, I don't know if you guys have seen him before, uh, Trace and Tommy um, to kind of play that dual threat role. Has that been done? in the past, um, like when you guys are preparing for Ohio State, for Maryland, um, or is this going to be something newer that you guys are working on? Uh, we've talked about it. This probably might be the first week we've really uh, did it, but Trace is a, a tough task too, the way he, especially in the summer, the way he just extended plays against us. Trace is pretty good. Can you talk about your role in nickel and dime coverage? and? Is it difficult to have to always kind of be ready to run in there and contribute kind of at the you know spur of the moment? 
Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, nickel and dime, it's basically about passing situations, getting more speed on the field. Um, just to be ready at a moment's notice is no big deal. Um, I kind of enjoy it, to be honest with you. Well, you, you've played here a while, played for a lot of different defensive coaches, I guess, over the years. Yes. How does you know, playing for different coaches affect your overall um, thoughts on football, how defenses attack, how defenses are schemed up, and, and maybe Coach Shoup in particular, how has he um, maybe caused you to think of think of the sport overall differently? Um, playing for different coaches, you kind of learn different schemes and master different schemes. So I learned Coach Butler's scheme. Um, I started to learn scrap Coach Bradley's scheme when I was getting recruited, and then when Coach Shoup came in, I learned his new scheme. So. Uh, what I learned from Coach Shoup is just about techniques, not tactics. Uh, just being in your position and doing what you're asked to do of the defense. So. When you're going against uh, dual threat quarterbacks, uh, what specifically do you, if, if anything, uh, make adjustments to? Uh, do you make adjustments? And, and uh, secondly, you said that you're pretty sure you got this one uh, against Northwestern. You know, uh, I'm just curious, you know, where does that confidence come from and, and why is that? Um, you gotta play with confidence. You gotta think that you're gonna win every game. Uh, Northwestern is a very good team. Uh, this quarterback, especially, along with like Maryland and Ohio State's quarterback, they can extend plays. And it's pretty tough for the DBs because you have to stay on your man a little bit longer, uh, stay in coverage, not you know go up and try to attack him, and he throws the ball over your head. So that's what most quarterbacks can do. You guys have probably some of the more uh, outgoing personalities, I'd say, in your meeting room. Yes. Yeah, can you take me through what's that like? Um, you got Jordan, who goes by Drop. So if you ever see Jordan, just say, what's up, Drop? Who goes, yo, what's good? Um, you got Marcus, who's a, a class clown, too. But the, the younger guys, like Aaron Monroe, a guy named Thomas Eddy, who we call Bubba, like the safeties room, we're always just cracking up. And then you got Coach Shoup, who is a, a funny guy himself, i just say that. <laughs> What's the, maybe the funniest thing that Bob's done? Because he's got a pretty dry sense of humor, right? Yeah, uh, actually, if you go on Twitter, you'll see his son actually posted a video of him dancing. Um, Coach Shoup can't dance, but the video is pretty funny, so that's probably the funniest thing. Did you guys bust him pretty hard about that video? Or? Yeah, we're just like amping him up, telling him he can dance, and he's just believing us. And <laughs> but Coach Shoup is a great guy.